Find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh? Check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Hey guys, it is the Awesome Cast, the podcast where we get techie, get geeky here. I'm Mike Sorg here in the Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA, trying to give you that flyover state uh, mentality of uh, tech, social media, and a little bit of video games this week, actually. We're crossing over a little bit uh, with us, of course, uh, remotely, as usual, John Chichilla, at Chilla on the Twitter. How you doing this week, sir? Pretty good. How are you doing? Uh, doing great, doing great. And also from that great site, insertcointobegin.com and the man behind chachiplays.com, it's Chachi, Anthony Walker, I will, which I refuse to apparently um, uh, capitalize your last name. Sorry about that. No, that's fine. I like to walk. It's fine. Okay. Hi, guys. Hey. It's hey. E3 week. It's E3 week, so he's which around. Is, which is way better than anything Apple does. Out there. We'll see. We'll see how that goes. And of course, Frank Shanoeth join us from the Great Outdoors <laughs> at Fuzzwad <laughs> on the Twitter. Uh, join us. How you doing, sir? It's been a bit. Doing good. Doing good. Awesome. Awesome. So, of course, this is, like I said, the Awesome Cast. You can find us here. We're live Tuesdays around 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time at live.sorgatronmedia.com. Dot com. Uh, you can find us online. Uh, we're at AwesomeCast on Twitter. We have AwesomeCast on the Facebook, on the uh, on the Google Plus as well. Get some conversation going there. Or you can drop us a line at AwesomeCast at SorgatronMedia.com. Uh, you can find us in audio and video versions uh, on iTunes, YouTube, Stitcher, Spreaker as well. Uh, and if you go in there, uh, please subscribe to us, follow us, whatever that mechanism may be. Please leave comments, share us if you dig what we're talking about. If you have any thoughts on what we're talking about please respond to us on uh facebook twitter google plus uh we want you guys get in the conversation help spread the word help people uh find this show we've been u- doing it for over 200 episodes holy crap uh and we're having a lot of fun with it and again so, as well uh thanks to our friends at slice on broadway for providing some studio pizza uh this week everybody's remote i invite everybody in this is how it goes but i didn't get pizza no no i yeah i say hey guys come on in i think i invited everybody here in the studio yeah tonight. you did and it doesn't work out sometimes that, that that's okay uh so let's get right into it with uh our, we'll get to e3 here in a little bit but first as usual let's touch on our awesome things of the week uh so uh let's start with you chilla so uh i actually ended up picking up i think we talked about the the cocoon grid it um, I actually was able to pick up the Cocoon backpack on sale, which actually fits a laptop, tablet, and a couple other things very nicely. But when you open up the front, and I have some stuff in here just wedged in from work, I don't know how you're going to get to see this on camera. I'll hold it up a, a little bit more. See, yeah. You can see everything in my bag, multiple cables, a wow. camera. All Look at all those dongles. Wow. All the dongles. Wow. I got I got. I got a plethora of dongles down here um some hacking utilities all all kinds of good stuff i got a usb hub um digital pens bluetooth pens a terabyte hard drive bluetooth mouse Jeez. Um, it, it works out perfect for any of that tech that you have that ends up floating around the bag and then i can actually fit three tablets a notebook and a laptop in the back pouch and then it has a small front pouch here that works out pretty well for, for wedging in some other stuff. So, And it, it actually sits relatively thin at probably about four and, a half, eh, four and a half, five inches, depending on how much you have wedged in it. And the, the bag itself empty is ultra light, mm-hmm. which is really nice, nice. because I hate I, I carry around a lot of stuff every day. And usually it's an Android tablet, an iOS tablet, a laptop, and a bunch of peripherals, as you can see. And that ends up working out really well. Um, I have the smaller device that you're showing up on the – or the smaller bag that you're showing up on the screen. Uh, it retails at about $80. They have they have some larger ones that fit, fit larger laptops. Um, I, I've been pretty impressed with it so far, and it, it I can bring everything that I want to. And it actually – 
is from the from just the gridit technology if i can fit more in it than i could with an old older larger bag you know chachi now that i'm thinking about this wouldn't this come in handy for all that crap we have to bring to uh all of those uh uh, uh shows on the weekends yes uh for the video <laughs> equipment would. like we should just get like three or four of these and just strap everything to it that that those would work out so well even if you didn't want to even if you didn't want to buy the bag mm-hmm you could at least get the large panel gridits. That's right. That's right. So, uh, cause I have, I think I have a, a, what do I have? I have a gridit that's I think eight inches and a gridit that's 12 inches. Like here's actually a bundle they're showing. <laughs> yeah. There's a one that they just have a bunch of gum in. Um, but yeah, just like, like strapping some of the loose stuff and throwing that in some of the bigger bags we have with everything else, that would help so much. We're going to have to look into that. That, that will be, um, Hey, Chell, I have one question about this, though. Mm-hmm. How tight do you hold this when you're traveling to and from work? <laughs> it goes between my legs on the T. Okay. I was just curious because, I mean, essentially, that's your three main tools. Yeah, the, the, only, thing that, the only thing that I don't like about it and the reason why I said – because usually I have to stand on the train on the way to work in the morning. Yeah. And the only thing I do not like about the bag – is that the base is not thick enough to stand up on its own. That's how thin it is. So you kind of always have to have a hand on it. So, so you, you have to have it either laying, laying against something so it's standing straight up. I'm, I would be afraid if it fell over, it would get trampled. But, yeah, I mean, everyone else, looking around the, the train in the morning, <clears throat> you figure you see everyone on their own tablet and smartphone and this and that. I don't worry about the theft aspect of it as much mm-hmm. as I do it falling over. And I, I don't even worry about if it fell over something breaking inside because it's the, 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 the tablet and, and um, laptop lining is pretty thick and it's a nice sturdy kind of squishy felt. Um, I, I so so I, I worry more just about it falling over and someone stepping on it. I, I I'm not going to give it that test um, <laughs> to see what would break mm-hmm. inside. Obviously, my dongles will be safe. Yeah, but so but I mean, the, it, it's this. It, it is padded enough. Like I know one problem I had with the bag I've been using is like it's taken a tumble and there's really no padding around like the corners. So like yeah, I had, I, I've gone. I had a uh, Brett Haven Ultra Slim mm-hmm. that was rated for a two-story drop mm-hmm. and it's it's actually a it's it it's a little thinner than this one but the inside actually has it's all little foam balls that are kept in place so that they actually dropped i think at a, at a conference they dropped a macbook pro from two stories and there wasn't even a dent nice nice um cool cool frank i know you got something awesome to share yeah. Uh, as everyone should know, this weekend is the 82nd running of the 24 Hours of Le Mans in France. I'm sure you guys all knew that, right? Oh, yeah. I was uh, stocking up on caffeine and crap. For yeah. Hey, 9 a.m. Saturday it starts. And now... I'm thanks- assuming this is some kind of race thing. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, now, with this app that was put out by the organizers of the race, they're streaming the entire race... 100% to both Android and iOS nonstop. So while you only get like two hours here and three hours there of coverage on TV, you get the full unabridged race through this app. Wow. Now, here's my question for you, Fuzzy. Okay. Uh, being the close personal friends that we are. Yeah. How does your wife feel about this? She thinks it's ridiculous. I figured as much. <laughs> yeah. Anything involving me and four wheels, it's automatically ridiculous. <laughs> but how much our... of it... should we should we take bets on how much he actually lets you watch? Oh, it doesn't matter because I have it on my phone. Now given to get access to the entire race, it does cost the eleven dollars. But not bad. It's it's the first time that they've ever offered the entire race in one place. Uh, rather than needing to stream for a little bit, and then whenever it goes on TV, then the streaming stops. It's just nonstop from one source. So wherever I'm at this weekend, I'm probably going to be watching some guys drive around in France. Nice. 
Awesome. And uh, what's that app called again? Um, you had to go and ask us. Oh, it, this looks French. It is French because <laughs> it's organized by a bunch of Frenchmen. So it's the 24 Hours du Mans. Awesome. And you can get that on the Google Play uh, App Store. Cool. Or on iOS. Chachi, what do you got this week? Uh, you know what? I haven't really been paying attention to tech news. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I was informed today that apparently uh, Apple is thinking about changing the headphone jack, which we'll get into in a bit. Ooh. Um, but uh, uh, the two things that I put in there are just small, ridiculous things. Um, I'm addicted to internet buttons. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're unaware, uh, the internet button is just a web page that has a simple flash button on it that has one function. Um, the two I put in there, uh, I've revisited Leroy Jenkins. If you're not familiar with Leroy Jenkins, uh, go to YouTube and look it up, look up the video. Hilarious. He's my spirit animal. Um, it's a World of Warcraft thing for those unfamiliar. Yeah. I, 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 the short version of it is a uh, clan was getting ready to do a raid. They were talking about the game plan for the raid. Um, one of the guys named Leroy Jenkins got up and went to the kitchen to get fried chicken. Sorry. And and came back, not knowing that they were still going over to the plan, going over the plan. Let out his uh, his war cry, and charged into the room. Therefore, aggroing every creature in the room, effectively killing his entire group. And uh, this this button is not iPhone compatible, so I can't bring it up. <laughs> no, it is. It, it works with the Android. Oh no! Oh, but uh, oh, and then the uh, and then the second one um, is uh, little John uh, turned down for what button? And all it is is just the the turn down for what uh, part of the song? And that one does work. And so so, so the first one's. Uh, uh, flash so the flash part if you're on any newer version of Android that no longer supports flash or an iPhone it's not going to work what happens, yeah. and try, what happens if you click the turn down the what um, button 10 times fast oh it loops Jenkins. I just clicked it 10 times yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it does that whole thing where it just uh, starts over and finishes um, my co oh, the, Leroy's, the, the Leroy's built on top of each other. Oh, okay. Um, it, it, it's a. <laughs> it's basically safe to say that my coworkers freaking hate me at this point. Um. So yeah, because between those two buttons, I've effectively gotten on their nerves. Nice. Which is fair because you know they deserve it. <laughs> so yeah. You should, you should make your own little website with a soundboard and put all these buttons on one page. Oh, oh man! And you could have you could have your own little. That's that's. The, I wish there were some nicer. And I know there's some. Uh, what's Boss Jock works well. I wish there was more like PC based soundboards that were just pretty much easy to configure. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to see if I can do that. Just work the that code is, right out of their HTML. Yeah, that is a brilliant idea. <laughs> Then you don't have to jump from site to site. It's all on one panel. Yeah, that that's that that would be amazing. Well, there's my project for the uh, foreseeable future. <laughs> You're gonna learn Swift on the uh, iPhone just to do that, right? What's that? Never mind. Um, so, <laughs> I like I said, I've been doing some <clears throat> traveling over the weekend, and um, and I noticed something interesting. Uh, so we went up the area, and on the way back, and those familiar with the area, you know, I-79, there's a couple spots where they drop down to one lane between, uh, I think it's between Grove City and Pittsburgh there, or, Green, or Grove City and Cranberry there. Uh, and it's kind of a pain in the butt, because sometimes they'll be, you know, you don't expect that you're riding around the, down the highway, and, and here you're going to get stuck in about, you know, five miles of traffic as everybody's merging. Um, so for whatever reason, I was using, I decided to use Google Maps. I really just kind of use whichever navigation I'm in the mood for. Super lazy. I'll use Siri and use Apple Maps. Uh, if I want to know everything that's coming up on the road, all the cops, all the accidents, everything ahead of me, I go with Waze. And Waze is nice because it just says, hey, we found another route that'll save you five minutes. And, and a lot of times they'll just kind of take over or pop up a thing at the bottom, right? Um, Google Maps, I, I noticed, started doing something similar. 
and they're a little more subtle about it. And this is the one thing I don't entirely, uh, it, it's nice, but I don't entirely like it as the driver paying attention because you have to kind of notice. Um, as you're driving along your path, you'll be going down, like, say, 79, and you're passing, say, a um, uh, an on-ramp or an off-ramp. And you'll see a little pop-up, and, you know, you have multiple routes, and they'll have the other routes grayed out, right? You'll see a little pop-up that says, we'll save you five minutes. Or adds five minutes or something like that, which was super handy because one of those super backed up things were happening on 79 on Sunday. And I shaved a half an hour by going an alternate route um, uh, on the way home to Pittsburgh. Uh, so something, and I noticed, I think this is a, a, you know, over time they've been adding better traffic and everything, you know, especially with the Waze data. Uh, so something to watch out for if you're using Google Maps or using the Android Google Maps. Um, like I said, super subtle. It doesn't really pop a thing. Hey, there's a better route, you know. Um, so if you're not paying attention to it, it might, uh, uh, you know, you, you might just pass by and end up in bad traffic anyways. So, uh, so something, something to watch out for. Um, so with that, let's get into some E3 coverage. Uh, Chachi, you got the list. All right, here's uh, well, I'm gonna do this quickly. Here's the complete rundown. And, and I wanna, I wanna qualify. We are gonna have a more game centric discussion on boss battle. That we're recording after this, you can check it over at uh, insertcointobegin.com when we post it later as well. Uh, so what do you got, Chach? Uh, this is the entire game rundown from the five major presentations that happened over the past two days. Mm -hmm. uh, Star Wars Battlefront, Dragon Age. Inquisition, Mass Effect Tech Demo, Sims 4, USC with Bruce Lee, NHL 15, PGA Tour 15, Criterion Racing Game Tech Demo, Madden 15, Dawn Gate, Mirror's Edge, Prototype FIFA 15, Battlefield Hardline, Far Cry 4, Just Dance 2015, Tom Clancy's The Division, The Crew, Assassin's Creed Unity, Shape Up, Valiant Hearts, Rainbow Six Siege, Uncharted 4, A Thief's End, The Last of Us, GTA 5, no Man's Sky, PlayStation TV, Grim Fandango, Magicka 2, uh, Indie Games, Abzu, Let It Die, Dead Island 2, Bloodborne, Intwine, Little Big Planet 3, Infamous First Slight, The Order 1866, uh, Destiny, Call of Duty Advanced Warfare, Horizon Horizon 2, Evolve, Assassin's Creed Unity, Dragon Age, Sunset Overdrive, Dead Rising 3, Dance Central, Fable Legends, Project Spark, Ori in the Blind Forest, Halo Master Chief Collection, Halo 5, Inside, Rise of the Tomb Raider, Witcher 3, Phantom Dust, Division, Scalebound, Crackdown, Amiibo, Mario Maker, Star Fox, Project Guard, Splatoon, Zelda, Smash Brothers, Yoshi's Woolly World, Kirby's Rainbow Curse, Hyrule Warriors, uh, Pokemon Omega, Sonic Boom, Monster Hunter 4, Bayonetta 2, Mario vs. Donkey Kong, Captain Toad, Treasure Tracker, Mario Party 10. All the games, all the games across uh, five press conferences. Um, also, I don't think that includes um, um, some of the indie montages that they had, but still. Um, no, it doesn't. Uh, it, it was all, all of. The, I could have put in indie montage, but I was just concentrating on the stuff that they talked about. Um, like I said, I want to kind of look more to tech side of this. Um, uh, let's go uh, uh, step by step. First of all, Xbox. Uh, and I know, you know, Chilla, you, you, you're big on some of the features that were included and they talked about and launched last year when we mm -hmm. talked about Xbox One with the Kinect. And, of course, lately they've dropped off. Do they have a version without Kinect? And um, I noticed their press conference, they said, we're going to talk about games in only games. There wasn't even any Kinect demos. You didn't see a Kinect demo, I think, until Ubisoft uh, was showing something off <clears> later. <throat> um I don't know what do you what do you think as somebody that's definitely into that side of the Xbox One show. I, it was it was a it was a, for, for me a big letdown, and I'm hoping they have something up and coming because one of the things that they released that same day was or it was the day before was a long laundry list of all of the extra applications like we still don't have HBO to go um, that were coming in the, this year as well as the the Halo TV show. <clears throat> a bunch of other uh, other pieces i i do enjoy playing video games um but i didn't buy they touted for what six to eight months how this was the center of your living room and then there was nothing additional to me beyond the games i, I am excited for some of the games I, I was a big star wars battlefront fan um rainbow six looked interesting uh 
What are some of the other ones? Assassin's Creed. I know there's a lot of followers of that. I'll probably pick that up. Um, I felt like some of the, I, I can't even remember what the one game was, but it was like, had it was probably, it, it, you couldn't tweet the name of the game because it was too many characters. Yeah. Um, Halo, Halo, I'm extremely excited for Halo 5 and the Master Chief Collection. I don't know if I'll be the only one to pick it up only primarily for the beta because I still have my other Xboxes. They're strategically placed around the house as both video game consoles and media consoles. Um, one of the big things that I enjoy using the Xbox for is streaming media off of my internal network. Um, they, I think that's still really kludgy on the Xbox One. Um, to be honest with you, I, didn't, I, I heard Sony kind of took the same thing. I don't know if that's true about just covering games. To a point, but, uh, they did. Sony did kind of stop in the middle. It's like they stopped in the middle of the barrage of of games and demos, and uh, and decided, hey, uh, we're going to talk about some of our stuff, uh, like the PlayStation TV, which is basically a, a PlayStation Vita, and it's supposed to be able to kind of, kind of like. I guess you can think Steam uh, home streaming, but for your PlayStation, so you can play your PlayStation 4 games and media anywhere in the house with, when you have this little $99 box. Mm-hmm. Um, so they still stepped back and said, we're doing this. We're doing this with PlayStation Now. We're doing this with PlayStation Plus. And of course, now is the uh, we can rent games and are going to really uh, start with the beta with a lot of their consoles starting in July. Um that's that whole I think that's that whole guy Kai streaming side of things. Um, so they did say here's some of the outside kind of stuff we're doing. Nothing straight T V, but at least they said here's some of the tech and services we're gonna be doing. Right. And and I feel like and, and I, like I said, I only I only watched all the way through the Microsoft one. I think they left twenty minutes for stuff in twenty fifteen. Mm-hmm. I feel like if if, if this is gonna it, I mean it's a yearly expo if, if something's not going to come out or doesn't have impact before the next show you know you can always cover it in between or at the next expo mm-hmm. don't show me games that are coming out christmas 2015 well you know that's funny because nintendo seemed to do nothing but this is what's coming in 2015 for the stuff well, you're really the problem excited about with that, it, it, the reason they do that is because at this point in time they can't say if it's coming out in christmas of 2015 mm-hmm. because as far as they know right now the game could be finished january 1st of 2015 and come out before the next d3 mm-hmm. so i mean you, you have to my look point at being is christmas 2015 is a year and six months away yeah but january 1st 2015 is oh right I, that's why i'm saying time. anything up through the next d3 or maybe even a few Mm-hmm. few months well, after. And that's, and that's what I'm saying because tw- you have to think 2015 could include is is part is January through May mm-hmm. as well. So and that's before that would be before the next E3. And it wasn't a lot. Like they didn't they didn't do a lot that was say in 2015, right? Like no. I, I feel like a lot of it was look for this well, at I Christmas. Mean, Nintendo some a lot of not Nintendo, but a lot of them said uh, with Christmas this year. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 so, and versus, I think I think Nintendo had uh, we got this now, but a lot of what you want is going to be next year. I know, Josh, you and I, a lot of what we're excited about are finally saying, "Hey, maybe we'll get a Wii U." Is hey, we'll maybe get a Wii U in 2015 from the looks of things, <laughs> which isn't bad, you know. I, you know, just like I think, I think you know, they're always it, gonna they're always gonna leave that little nugget of this is what's coming down the line. Uh, you know, expect you know with the Halo that's obviously coming next year. We got Master Chief Collection. Yes. In the meantime, is a little nugget at least, right? Um, there, there's six months of time before the next uh, of 2015 before the next E3. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, it, it, they have to have to, in especially in Nintendo's case, they have to build interest. Yeah. Yeah. Because they're they're sinking. Yeah, they're they're crawling from behind right so, now. So, so I mean, they have to do what they have to do, and if that means announcing games to let people know they're still Nintendo, mm-hmm. then that's what they're going to do. So, um, and, and on the tech side, like I said, Sony kind of really stepped them, saying, "Hey, here's some of the forward-moving stuff that we're working on." They did have 
mention and um, said that they they had on the floor a new demo for Project Morpheus. This is still a pie in the sky thing. This isn't coming out this year. This is maybe could be sort of maybe we'll have it next year if things go right. Um, I don't know. You guys have seen I, I think videos at least. We, I think we talked about it here on the show before. Um, and, oh it, and, wait, hold on. Yeah. Um, before we get to to that, I, I wanted to comment on uh, Chilla's uh, Microsoft gripe. Okay. Um, the reason they did that and you got screwed on all your apps and stuff is because of the flack they caught in the past 12 months. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. From Sony and uh, PC gamers um, saying that Microsoft is uh, concentrating more on entertainment, not video games. That's true. That's true. So and this is... They, 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 this is a video game conference, and this is yeah. for the video game press, and then they're doing. They have to do a lot of crawling out, out from behind there as well. Not as much as Nintendo, though. Uh, but no, uh, Project Morpheus. For those who don't know, it, it's a VR headset that they've been uh, demoing with and showing some stuff online, uh, doing some some kind of. It's. I guess this is like a this is like an R and D thing they're kind of coming out of left field with. Um, have you guys seen any demos? I don't think anything new has come out just yet from um, E3. You're wrong. Has it yet? Yeah. Well, no, you're wrong. Um, uh, as far as uh, Morpheus goes, um, it's made more headway in the past week than Oculus Rift did. Okay. Oculus Rift, and don't get me wrong, Oculus Rift has been getting some fantastic online uh, pushes. Mm-hmm. I, I, I mean, the viral marketing for that is amazing. However, I'm pretty sure uh, Project Morpheus outsmarted Oculus and uh, took it to the the uh, Tonight Show. Right, um, right. Uh, which, well, a lot of those companies do because uh, 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 Fallon, even when he was on the Late Show, always had Microsoft, Sony, Nintendo on there. Like Reggie's been on there showing off stuff before, especially around E3. Um, and I think that's the big difference too: is they have Sony behind it um, versus. You know, Oculus is just getting the power of like Facebook behind it, getting the money and the marketing push. All uh, it would have taken idea. is Mark Zuckerberg to call Jimmy Fallon and say, "Hey, you want to you want to play with this?" True, true. Or or even Josh Topolsky to say, "Like, hey, maybe you should take a look at this on the show." Uh, yeah, because I know he's been I mean, involved too. Uh, Project Morpheus had Jimmy Fallon and Channing Tatum play. Yeah, and that's huge. That's huge for that, and people are going to be talking about that and know about it more than Oculus, like you know, the general population. And that's going to be the big difference. Just like when Kinect was first coming out and they showed it off on Fallon. I thought right. that was huge for them. Huge for them. Um, see how far it's gone, but, you know, um, definitely. Uh, what about uh, uh, Frank and Chilla? Have you seen anything from Project Morpheus? What do you think about it? Do you think it is going to be uh, out Oculus Rift, the Oculus Rift? <laughs> I actually haven't seen anything about it, so I don't have anything for this. <laughs> I, I saw I saw the concept, and I, I I think because of the connect the connection to Sony, I think you're going to see them get into more houses and more. They'll become more mainstream. I, I don't see it. What 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 makes me interested in, and I, I read some stuff about the Oculus Rift and, and Morpheus about. Sound sync and certain pieces of the technology that they're they're continuing to tweak because it makes people extremely sick. Mm-hmm. Um, that's where I wonder. I like what would the Nintendo had one of their their handhelds that was 3D, and and kids after like 20 minutes would would get massive headaches. Mm-hmm. Will will they be able to break through because of that? That'll that'll be what makes me wonder. And I think that's the unfortunate thing. I think a lot of this has the same issue as and look at that guy bobbing in the background in the video <laughs> um interesting because it is the headset but apparently also as part of the tracking it is using the playstation camera uh so it's kind of like a, a pairing an oculus rift with maybe a connect kind of idea uh so, so not only do you need to buy the buy the morpheus you also then need to buy the yeah, <laughs> and that's kind of like when they showed the PlayStation Move versus the Connect. Where it's like I have to have the camera and I have to have this lollipop thing. Um, and yeah, it tracks really nice, but I'm holding a pink lollipop. You know, Look, uh, and how many people have room in their house for this kind of stuff? I know it yeah. wasn't even an issue with the original Connect, and it was one of the major upgrades they made to the new Connect on the One was it allowed for a lower depth of field, so you could you could be standing like 
three feet away from it and it's going to yeah. get the, the hey some of, of us don't have through. very big um living rooms let alone houses sometimes right like uh, like what, what about the people in the apartment right um yeah it's it, it and i think that's the thing this is kind of very like but then they're, they're kind of shopping to the people with the money in the big living rooms for the most part right uh with i think a project like this uh so far i don't know i don't think they know where they're going with it uh, but again, because of Sony, uh, they can get it out there. I am curious to see, is there any progress? Uh, of course, we're not going to hear anything just yet. It's probably now, I think, E3 officially starts on the floor, I think, today uh, after the uh, Nintendo announcement. Uh, but uh, I am curious to see what, what does Oculus Rift uh, get a little headway, you know, because of their recent, you know, upgraded owners uh, and, and getting some of the guys like Carmack behind it. Uh, so I don't know. We'll see. Uh, I don't expect this to come out from sony for another two years to be honest where it's at right now they're still talking it's about it's gonna have to be an affordable price point it won't be because of sony <laughs> but so. i mean that was their big touting factor of the the playstation 4 was it was a hundred dollars one cheaper. of the few times where they can see they say they're the cheaper <laughs> product you know um versus i mean aren't sony tvs like obscenely more expensive typically um like it's like they they were the they were the brand before apple was the brand they were the mm -hmm. the lifestyle brand way before you know, you know Apple had iPods. Uh, they mentioned in the the PlayStation Now streaming that they're also going to be bringing it to people with select Sony TVs. So I'm, I'm presuming you know certain smart TVs that are able uh, to add on this capability. So you know it's like great they're going to bring it to even more people that have the very very limited options of owning a Sony TV with a specific thing. You know, is, I, I see on the list Sony Dead Island Two. Is that an exclusive for Sony? No, I don't think so. Okay, I they doubt just it. Covered it in there. I I, so. Can I can I bring up my one gripe about E3 this year? Hmm. Is the uh, liberal use of the word exclusive? Yes. Um, listen, video game companies, all of you. Um, well. The console companies, I sh should say. Um, just because you get something a month before the other companies does not exclusive, does not make a game exclusive. It depends on how they say it. Like, Sony, I was under the impression that they were the only ones getting upgraded GTA Five, but where I, then I find out later, yes, you're getting it on PC and Xbox One as well. Um, versus when I watch the Xbox One, they say Call of Duty... Uh, add-on content exclusive first on. They're saying first on versus uh, showing the Batman game and they said they're going to get all the Scarecrow levels. Yeah, and probably until I can get the uh, Game of the Year edition on the PC and I'll have all those levels in place. Right? Yeah. Um, yeah, they, they are very liberal with that. I'm with you on that. It, it does kind of bother me. Um, also the idea of, cause I know I was watching with Missy last night with the PlayStation one. So like, so they're getting that and it's like, no, no, they're just, they're exclusively showing the trailer first at their yeah. thing, hoping you forget that there's another console that might have this, you know, uh, keep in mind a lot of times these, especially Microsoft and Sony, I believe were broadcast live on spike TV. So this is going to the broad audience and a broad audience when they hear like you're complaining about with them saying exclusive, that's what they're going to go tell their friends. Like, oh, did you see Sony had GTA 5? Did you so see Sony had uh, Metal Gear Solid 5, which is going to be on both consoles? Um, they're trying to change the message, to control from, that message. From a technology perspective, I thought it was pretty cool that Microsoft was was saying that all of all of the Xbox One titles they, they introduced it with halo is going to get its own dedicated servers mm -hmm. um and then they kind of i don't think it was it was dwelled upon but they and they said and as so is every other xbox one game mm -hmm. so so to me being able to spin up those those machines and servers on an as-needed basis um to me from a technology perspective and i'm sure aj would comment on this is pretty impressive um for what it's worth and the big thing and i've talked about this on boss battle recently is we do have the aspect and they they touted this with xbox one that they're they they're waiting to flip the switch on the cloud 
processing that you're supposed mm -hmm. to have with the Xbox One. I don't think they've applied it to games so far. This idea, I, it's, it's in, it's in, um, uh, what's the game I play? It's like kind of like a mech game. Uh, Titanfall. Titanfall. Titanfall has that same back end. So, so, it kinda, so it was their it was their premier game that uses the back end. Oh, okay, and so it, it, and they haven't been talking about it, and it's, it's kind of like a geeky techy thing. But, but so basically, the way I understand it, not only only is all the processing for the game happening on the console like we're used to, but there is actually some processing for the game in the cloud. That, in the cloud, and so it it kind of <coughs> offloads some of that, so so the box itself isn't doing everything. Right. Well, to me, it's a big deal for me. I, I, as a as a long time Xbox owner, I can remember when the the fall updates would come up, come out in the beginning. For it, like I remember, I think it was Gears of War came out about the same time as one of the fall updates, and Gears of War was practically useless to play with your friends, as well as trying to download anything else from the Microsoft servers that day because they were getting hammered with the, with the OS updates down to the Xbox mm -hmm. for, for the, for the UI. It was the first time I think they kind of went to that Metro interface to the point where, I mean, back then we, we had kind of a gaming group that was playing every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Um, to the point where I would say we actually stayed away from even getting together the week of xbox live updates because it was just horrendous trying to use the service wow. um with it with spinning up servers on the fly i'm thinking all of these issues will quickly quickly go away mm. their system updates have a have a little bit to, to be desired i mean the whole it updates in the background it's not. I, I haven't seen that to be a hundred percent true. My Xbox never gets turned off, and yet in the middle of the day, watching in the middle of watching TV, I get a prompt saying, oh. "You want to reboot now?" Because you it it uh it didn't work right. And Kraus is agreeing. Yeah, he was one of the ones that we would constantly have that Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday thing running, and it, it just any time there was an update sucked. Mm -hmm. Um, another, uh, uh, Frank, I know you, uh, I'm always interested in this because, uh, 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 Forza Gran Turismo, of course, as well, are always very, very technically, holy crap, uh, uh, you know, true to the real life thing. So they added something, uh, pretty significant with this, uh, one track, uh, Frank, can you tell me about that? Yeah. Whenever Forza 5 came out, there were a whole bunch of complaints and, you know, there was a complaint of there aren't that many tracks, there aren't that many cars. And, you know, part of it was they went back to scratch with the game, built it from the ground up on a new physics engine. Well, they wanted to do that with everything. So, therefore, they didn't have the, Nor the Nürburgring Nordschleife in the original release of Forza 5. Uh, the other day, whenever it was announced, D3, I believe it was yesterday, uh, they announced that it was available as a free download. Then they went into the specifics of it. The part of the reason why it wasn't included in the original release of Forza 5 was the uh, laser scanning technology at the time wasn't up to par with what they felt the Nürburgring deserved, being that it's such a massively historic racetrack. So this year, uh, it came around where they did feel that the technology was there to properly scan it. So they scanned uh, three versions of the track. Uh, there's the circuit track, which is something like a mile and a half or two miles or something like that. There's the Norch Life, which is about 13 and a half miles. And then there's uh, the Norch Life plus the circuit together is one giant 16 mile track. What they did, uh, Turn 10 Studios actually uh, rented out the track. You're able to rent uh, that entire racetrack. A lot of automotive manufacturers do that to test their cars. They rented the track for two solid days just to scan it. They went wow. through with this insane uh, laser scanning rig to get it down to millimeter accuracies. And the reason why it's so big with this track is the tarmac surfaces. They're different at different points of the track. 
there's some turns where it has this real rough, just loose uh, tarmac. There's other parts where it's a real grippy tarmac. And they wanted to go beyond just replicating the racetrack. In terms of the racetrack, they wanted to actually get the backgrounds right. Now, I have a quote here uh, from, the, from them about it. Um, here it is. The Nürburgring is an all-new laser scan, so it's getting to that millimeter of accuracy. We had 30 artists who worked on this track and took us nearly a year to deliver. That's 13,000 man hours that went into this track. We want it to be something where the professional race car driver, the Jackie Stewart's of the world, can recognize every little bump, every piece of grass, can recognize the trees, every building. They use all of those references that most of us have never even seen but they don't hurt our experience either. So we have this incredibly detailed track that we can learn and fulfill our fantasies while having pro drivers able to drive it at any level. So they wanted to not only replicate the track in terms of, well, the track's you know, 15 feet wide here and it goes this way. They wanted to have the landscape perfect so that if, you know, say you're Jackie Stewart, you know, a uh, one of the most legendary race car drivers, you sit down, the next box never played it before you already know the track because you're like okay that house sitting there on that hillside i know that i slow down whenever i come up this close to this house i come up on this set of trees i know i speed up through this time so that anyone can play it and it uh replicates it better than any other iteration of the track ever because it has been in basically all of the racing simulators that have come out recently since about uh I want to say it was Gran Turismo 4 that first had it that I remember playing. Every big racing simulator since then has had the Nürburgring. So they wanted to just make it the best version ever. Nice. So that's that's why they waited to get the laser tech that they did to scan it as properly as they did. Sounds like some cool tech going into that. Mm-hmm. Cool. Sounds like Tony Stark's basement with Jarvis and the wireframe scan. <laughs> awesome. Basically, yeah. <laughs> um, I've seen pictures of it. It looks like it looks like a pickup truck that has about three of the Google Earth cameras, the Google Street View cameras. It, ha- it looks like it just has like multiples of those all around the truck. And it'll just drive along the track at about five miles an hour, just scanning every little thing. I think I got a picture of it. No, maybe not. <laughs> maybe. Anyways, uh, awesome. Uh, and of course, the last one to touch on uh, a little bit tech, of course, we didn't say Nintendo. Uh, I feel as a Nintendo fan, no, they're not better than Xbox, but uh, and we'll get a little more into the game side of what was good and bad of it. Uh, but uh, Nintendo, I thought, showed, hey, we have one, we have stuff coming out that you might be interested in. Um, and they also added a little tech two things uh and i i'm gonna have to look again and see what the the name of these is i think it's amigos amiibo amiibo uh again getting on the skylanders uh disney infinity track and they're gonna have little toys and you hold it up to the wii u and i think maybe even the nintendo uh ds if i'm not mistaken 3ds excuse me um and uh you have characters in Smash Brothers, Mario Kart, and they're going to have a well, they have a whole list of games they're going to add this to. Um, what do you think, Josh? I mean, this is uh, low tech, but still tech. Uh, you know what? It, it sucks. And let me tell you why it sucks. Uh, I don't know if you've seen my collection of toys on my desk at work, but it's huge. To the point where I, I've started that thinking that I should get a small box and maybe bring some of them home. Because mm-hmm. I have way too many toys on my desk at work. And this just gives me more reason to do that because whether I have the device or not, I'm going to want the little Link. The little Mario. The little Samus. <laughs> the Yoshi. And- I, I, I mean, because... I. Right, uh, I have a, a co-worker who I talk to about video games all the time, uh, more so him asking me for advice on um, what he should do about his kids. And it turns out that his kids, uh, seven and five, 
had never even played a, a, a console game, but still had tens and tens of the, the Skylander figures. Hmm. Because they wanted the, the figures, and so they would go out and buy the figures. And that's my problem. That, that That's exactly what I do. Mm-hmm. So, and that's why it's genius, because they're taking these characters, you know, that even if they haven't picked up a console in several generations, you are you want that Link figure, you want that uh, Mario figure, and now it'll do something, you know. Right. Um, and they're showing uh, on these, you hold the, you just hold the figure up to the Wii U controller, and it inserts it, and uh, then you can upgrade the character and everything, keep track of the stats in the game. Um, well, it, this the, is what they the, needed to do. I mean, this the, is this is the perfect thing to take all that 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 IP that you know that they've been living on for for how long, um, and uh, and and giving something to their fans. The, the, well, and, and the thing that takes this above the Disney Infinity and the Skylander, um, and I don't know what technology they're using to do it, mm-hmm. um, but unlike those other figures. Uh, the, these figures are able to grow. Mm-hmm. Um, you're, if you go out and you get a Mario get a Mario figure for Smash Brothers, and you use that figure for Smash Brothers, and you win like 20 rounds with it, it transfers the stats to the figure. Mm-hmm. And any special abilities that you pick up from any other games, and it goes to that figure. Not not to the, your your save file, but to the figure. So I do wonder. Maybe they're doing this. My first guess is NFC. Like I think it's just an NFC chip, and they have a serial number, and that calls to a server online. Is my guess. Um, but who knows? Or it's pretty much a cloud game save with some kind of unique identifier to the the, the device. Yeah. It could be. I, I I mean that's that's what gives it a step up to the others. Um, as far as the uh, little figures go, mm-hmm. I thought I thought it was pretty cool. They're they, they're having a you can with with the Super Mario Brothers you can now le- edit levels and share them. Yeah, that's another one. Again, a 2015 release. Right. Uh, I, I I thought it was kind of funny because there's Project Spark that uh, you can create video games like you know some pretty pretty impressive stuff from the looks of things on uh, the Xbox. But we get a Mario Maker on Nintendo. Exactly. We get a 2D Which, Mario Maker, <laughs> but more people will get into that Mario Maker and are, are more excited about that idea. And I love the idea that you could flip from 8-bit Mario, uh, Super Mario Brothers, to like the new version look of the same levels. You're saying something, Josh? I, I, I was going to point out the, the fact that at the end of the, uh, the preview for that, they showed Mario unable to get into the castle. Because whoever made the level blocked it. <laughs> and I, so and I, I, uh, and it, I, it was just the little things like that that make it all worth it. And I hope, I, I'm really hoping that this, this, I imagine they're doing this. They're going to put those levels online and I can just download other people's levels and see what crazy stuff people are doing. Right? This is a, you know, no, no yeah, point. Make, it, make yeah, it so that you can't see it. Yeah, it's a two-way street. Mm-hmm. So uh, I think they got something cool there. Uh, another little add-on. It's like this generation's Mario Paint. So only better, only better. <coughs> anything else you guys want to touch on uh, tech-wise? Anything else with uh, E3? And we got a couple of stories we'll touch on here. And of course, like I said, it, we'll have. Uh, oh yes, I, go no, ahead. Sorry, I'm go sorry. Ahead. Um, yeah. I just I just needed to point out really quick. Um, I, I said I'd do it on Twitter. Um, the reason Nintendo did not win E3. Uh, despite uh, a, a, an amazing showing at E3. Boris have put a ring on it, that's why. Um, first off, um, <laughs> no, um, first off, the fact that people walk around saying that such and such company won E3 is ridiculous. Um, secondly, uh, while... Yes, I said that I would be buying a Wii U within the next year. Um, completely true. I will be buying a Wii U within the next year. However, showing everything that you should have shown last year at E3 and finally getting your system up to par with the other two companies 
does not in E3 win. No. No. And and they need they, they needed to do that. And, th and th the other thing is, they're also talking directly to Nintendo fans. There's nothing in there. If you do not give a crap about Mario, there is nothing in that presentation that you're going to really get into, right? Versus everything everything else seems to have more of a mass appeal. Uh, Chilla, what was your thought? I was going to say Zelda alone would would sell me on mm -hmm. potentially picking up picking up a device. But I'm I'm wondering what we'll see next year. Will we see Amazon there? Will we see other small companies as these other game consoles come? Or will they get more exposure mm -hmm. as as more console type systems? come out that are cheaper uh, one of the things that i'm keying off of is what chachi said i think his his friend at work the kid's 10 and doesn't have a console what what will that mean and, and what what will that bring mm -hmm. to the the future events and, and i also challenge you as far as that goes um it's kind of hard because all those sites look at the big three you know companies sure. and that's how they temper their coverage but if you look i bet you're going to still see Android developers, iPhone adapt uh, developers a little bit, right? Um, oh yeah, should be there somewhere. I'm sure, mm -hmm. right? Uh, showing something off. Um, they don't <laughs> well, get it. last year. Oh yeah, put their booth in the parking lot. Oh, that's right. That's right. But still, was a presence, and there there again some excitement going. I don't think it really went anywhere. Um, and I uh, got them a lot of word of mouth talk yeah, exactly it definitely worked in it <laughs> yeah it, it's a year, perspective yeah, it's a year later and we remember that ouya put a booth in the parking lot so <laughs> none of us own ouya so <laughs> there you go uh but yeah i'd be interested to see what happens with that it'll be interesting if amazon does take place but if, you know amazon's the kind of company if they do decide to go that route do they even bother with e3 right i don't see why they wouldn't it's not going to hurt anything True, true, but I compared, feel... Compared to what they pay for some other stuff, I can't imagine it. That is true. Uh, I, I see Amazon as a type to, uh, during E3, go have a uh, presentation in Seattle or New York about their gaming platform. Mm -hmm. I, I see them that way, too. But even still, just to go to E3, you're going to have that massive crowd there. You know, there, you're going to have some large crowd of people who are just curious, well... Why is Amazon here in the first place? Let's see what they have to that's say. That's true. That's true. And you are, and 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 also keep in mind, this is an industry event. This is reviewers. You know, these are the IGNs and the Game Spots and 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 Game Informers, as well as I believe this is actually an industry show, like the CES, where this is like the buyers are out too. Uh, so it, it, this isn't a fan con, you know. Uh, quite frankly. I, I'm surprised that the Ouyas and the Amazons haven't taken the, the Nintendo route. Mm -hmm. I, I seriously think that more companies need to do what Nintendo's doing. Yes, Nintendo probably has a huge booth in E3. However, they took the time out leading up to E3 to put together an incredible video. Mm -hmm. And didn't have to buy the uh the presentation spot it was probably a ton cheaper to make that video than it was for that yeah the and we'll be talking about that video and the giant screens and they did so much because the biggest thing was last year there was the president of, J of nintendo japan with his broken english accent reading a teleprompter trying to get us excited for mario versus donkey kong uh yes. and this year we got reggie we got reggie fighting the other president um we got robot chicken interludes all throughout the thing we got them make poking fun at the fact that you know every what everybody says at e3 about what they present and what they don't present um it was fun it it is the nintendo i remember that gets me excited about something that has a little bit of swagger to it too um and it was just so much better produced and and delivered the right stuff the only way it could have been better is if they green screened two giant middle fingers. Had the Japanese, the president of Nintendo come out, give everyone the finger, and say in broken English, this is what we got in the, in the kitchen. Okay. Because, I mean, that's essentially what they did this year. 
and, and to your point about Nintendo, everybody else needs to do. Uh, oh, oh, the other part, part two of that point was uh, Ubisoft. I think feel I feel does the same thing. This is a French company that has one of the big five presentations, and they put Aisha Tyler up there as the host. Not some little white French dude telling me about Tomb Raider. They put <laughs> Aisha Tyler in front, um, who towers over the little French dudes, apparently. Uh, and, and she is just incredible on the stage in general. She is. And she she's, uh, she's not somebody, like, she's somebody that wants to be there. You know, yeah. that is legitimately well, into this. I, 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 unfortunately, and I'm not going to get into it in depth. Unfortunately, I was watching the IGN coverage of it. Mm -hmm. um, I won't ever do that again. Um, but I was watching their pre and their post shows. And they had Aisha on the uh, Ubisoft uh, post show. And, and she is, she is the gamer. Because they flat out asked her what games uh, she wants to play. And she was like, to be honest, the games that I would be playing, I'm in. So she's, and and she's like, and, and she actually, it was hilarious because uh, she was like, are we allowed to swear on this? Right before she answered <laughs> the question. And she was like, the games I would want to play, I'm effing in. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, she, cool that, and, that's cool that they she, have that relationship with her. Uh, she just that. has the swagger mm -hmm. uh, to be working with a company like Ubisoft. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean... It, and I don't consider if, her a big name, either. No. Like, like, you'll know her from a few things if you know Archer, and then she's done a few other things. She has a she has a podcast, which is actually a really good podcast. Um, so, you might not... Like, I didn't know who the hell she was when she first came out, right? And now, I kind of know a little bit more. Uh, but it didn't matter. It was a great presentation, so... But, uh... Right, she she could have been a nobody, mm -hmm. acting like she did, and it would have still been the same presentation. All right, real quick, I want to pick two stories that are not E three to touch on here. Uh, so uh, I don't know what what's the big stuff this week. I know we have a couple we sat on from last week even. I'd go with your Verizon Netflix. Yeah, this has been developing over the last week, and we actually had this in the hopper last week from Juggalo John, and I actually had seen this a couple days previously myself. Oh wait, no, no, like, this is I'm looking at the wrong thing. I'm looking You're at looking the YouTube at the one. This is connected, sort of though. Um, we'll we'll touch on this and we'll lead into the, the the Verizon thing. So if you're watching YouTube, you may see a thing pop up at the bottom and says how. It, was, it says, like, how is your stream or something like that? And it'll pop up this little report. Um, like, for us, you know, I'm on Verizon Fios, and it tells me how I do and, like, time of day, uh, how many people, like, what percentage of people get the HD stream. It tells me I'm YouTube HD uh, 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 verified. And there's, like, this little kind of, like, like you can go check out, say, how does video get to you? Nice little kind of, uh, you know, this has been the big discussion lately. Let's me know some of my local is like, hey, Xfinity by Comcast, also HD verified. We're good there. If I was, uh, standard, I would have standard definition if I had clear wire. If I had uh, uh, not Fios, Verizon, I imagine this is, DSL, stuff like that. Um, and then the story comes out, which I think is very related because we're talking about the providers. Uh, Verizon or uh, Netflix started putting up this message that said uh, that your net we're we're buffering because it's crowded on your network with Verizon. Which got me. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, and I think that it first started off with with Verizon. It sounded like they were going to do that for all. They said all it was the, a test. They said they were testing test. this message. Yeah, which is interesting because I mean they're they're trying to come up with agreements. I mean they they signed that agreement with Comcast to to get uh, content delivery network set up direct with them. That's one of the reasons that actually the Apple TV has one of the the best Netflix experiences is because it goes through Apple's content delivery network. Mm -hmm. um, but and and I see this sporadically and it, and. I see it more dependent on what device I'm using versus, I mean, I could have different devices all around the house and I see different 
different playback quality based on just based on the device. Mm -hmm. But I find it interesting that they must have been they must have been trying to do some kind of bandwidth analysis. Then Ver and, and they could actually say, you know, Verizon Network's crowded right now. They're adjusting the video for smoother playback. I, I wish there was some way of of allowing everybody to do this. Mm -hmm. Or and providing, I think there should be like a click here to find out more, and it gives you how they figured that out. Maybe kind of like kind of like YouTube seems to be doing, right? And, and give you give you that answer or, or reasoning as to why they came to that that issue. Like, is it is it based on a network path that it's using? Is mm -hmm. it like, give me some diagnostics because maybe I could do some. Is it a DNS lookup or something crazy? Because then I could. Move to a Google DNS server, and they can watch everything that I look at. In, in but, the end, it's yeah. You know, we're talking about you know Netflix did the deal with Verizon or uh, Comcast. Apparently, they did do the deal already with Verizon, and Verizon apparently has not kicked up, picked up the slack, and 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 actually uh, turned on whatever it is or installed whatever it is uh, that helps Netflix run uh, a little smoother on their network. And this is talking about like adding uh, certain machines. I think part of it. You know, one of the things they do with Comcast and some of these other things Netflix offers uh, to cache some of their offerings inside the Comcast network. So there's actually a server, like, I guess, at your local Comcast office server, however they delineate that, uh, that has, you know, all those episodes of Clone Wars that you're pulling down. You know, so you get that from a local point. You're not getting it from all the way across the Internet. Uh, it's obviously going to run a little faster, a little smoother, because there's less points it needs to go through that could get congested. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and I'm with you. Like I, I've noticed that too, because I know it's on Xbox. I have more problems on Xbox with HBO, Hulu, WWE Network. The only place I have a problem with the WWE Network. Have not seen as many issues on the Chromecast. So I, I, I'm with you on that. I think there is something to that. But uh, yeah, and I. I, I, I I, I think too some of that is because how often I, I see a lot more updates coming to other pieces of equipment versus like I, I I'll say for like the Xbox and and my TiVo have the the poorest experience versus any desktop browser or mobile device and and I would say that the Apple TV is by far the best experience but that's because they have dedicated network just for that. Awesome. Uh, one more. Uh, let's touch on this as a, as a good one to go out. Uh, Tommy, apparently uh, Back to the Future is being rebuilt as a perfect replica somewhere. Yeah, it's in London, and they won't disclose the, the location, which kind of makes you wonder. Like because... nobody's going to notice? <laughs> exactly. Because they're building the stages for both um, – 1955 and 1985 or 19 85 85 and they're also claiming there's an easter egg that you can find that'll take you into what was it 2015 yeah and they don't know they're, they're speculating that there may actually be both versions of 1985 1985 with uh biff's uh uh, high rise as well as the the normal um, the, the alternate yeah, yeah yeah so I, I don't know how you could mask that and it was anywhere a, so it was it's got to be part of an amusement park or something right but even if it, think about it think about how much space that would take up in an amusement <laughs> park the whole the whole section of the amusement park would have to be shut uh, down. how much how much crap do they they still build out from disney world like i'm sure there's something out there that just has a lot of land isn't there a euro disney i guess it's in paris yeah uh, I but still i guess they're saying this is in london yeah maybe they're so I, they're converting one of those old uh uh olympics things that they built two years ago you know uh, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sure those don't get much use, but I don't know. Crazy. Hey, it's almost 2015, and we've already been duped once with the hoverboard in the past year. So, all right, with that but, again. But just so you, if you follow this this secret cinema, one last thing, um, they do this like every I think four to five years ish. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, they did Blade Runner, a complete replica of Blade Runner back in 2010. Really. 
Yeah. So you may want to pass this on to Malengo and in the other show, Movie Minute. Um, I think this would be awesome if if you could if you could go kind of see this and and live relive the experience. Awesome. Awesome. Hey, some quick shout outs. Um, first of all, we talked about, uh, again, Alpha Lab Demo Day uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, if you check out Tech Vibe Radio, it's actually the radio show they do uh, from the Pittsburgh Tech Council. Uh, it's in podcast form. It's on, uh, I believe I found it on Stitcher. It's on iTunes, of course, uh, wherever you get your podcast from. Uh, but they have about four parts talking to a lot of those companies that we talked about uh, from Demo Day. Uh, so go check that out. Tech Vibe Radio. Uh, that'll get you wherever you can find that. Also, uh, a podcast I just discovered, Brunchbird, uh, talking with Josh Lucas over at Crowdosaurus, doing something really cool up at Joshie's neighborhood, actually, called the Hardware Store. Um, they're doing a lot of uh, crowdfunding stuff, like kind of like 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 custom uh, mini crowdfunding stuff, as well as uh, I know they have like a workspace there. Uh, they have a lot of studio, green screen, podcast studio kind of stuff going on there. So one, check out the Hardware Store uh, up there in Allentown. Uh, neighborhood of Pittsburgh, not Allentown, PA, uh, for those curious. And check out the – look up Brunchburg, and you can check out the uh, latest uh, episode of Brunchburg over at – I think it's brunchburg.com. Um, I think that's Mary Stewart that does that. Um, so uh, it's fun. They, they actually do it, like, out at brunch as well. So you get to discover and hear about some uh, brunch places around town as well if uh, you're into that kind of scene as well. Uh, I've listened to it before, and she actually does a good uh, job of just going over the food, too, as they're uh, having their conversation. Yeah, I like it. I, I just listened to this last episode, um, and yeah, it's very conversational. And, and you know, the, What I like about podcasts is it's just a conversation. You know, It's not this tightened-down you know, synthetic thing like when you listen to NPR or something, right, uh, or something on TV. Like it's, it's loose, you know, um, and that's what I like about what we do with some of these shows, too. Um, so go check that out. Uh, Chilla at Chilla on the Twitters. That's me. Um, oh, upcoming, uh, I'm going to use Lyft for the first time this week. Ooh. This so I hope I'll let I you hear, know how that works out. I hope I hear from you again. <laughs> um, Amazon obviously has their announcement on the 18th. Mm-hmm. I'm going to WizardCon Philly. So look nice. for pictures and information coming out of that on June 20th. And when I come back, Google will be kicking off IO on the 25th. That'll be fun. I can't. I can't wait to see their their responses to WWDC. I, mm-hmm. I expect a lot of uh, 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 a lot of snaps back. A lot of, a, a lot of, a lot of toxic health too. Yes, a lot of a lot of anti. So in our toxic health too, um, <laughs> like you know that phrase is going to be brought up at least once on stage. It has to be. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. I think it's going to be fun. I want to see how they, they flash back and, uh, and, and Hey, I got, I got Google devices. So awesome. I can, I actually have something I can do with them. I'm, I'm excited. Cause I mean, I have the Nexus, but I, I have, I have multiple Android devices and I'm always like, when's this mm-hmm. going to update? Mm-hmm. And finally having a Nexus device. I don't have to worry about that. I just got four, four, three on the Nexus seven. It's a beautiful thing, isn't it? Uh, I have not looked at it since it updated like yesterday. So, uh, but I'll be getting into that. I no, was at- I, no, I meant the Nexus thing, not needing to oh, wait. Oh yeah, yeah, that that. <laughs> uh, also, uh, uh, a colleague of mine got the Moto G, which for a cheap phone, that is a nice phone. It really is. Um, although we were having to help him, he couldn't figure out how to add contacts that from a missed call or from a history call, and we were trying to figure well, that out earlier. I think the next time the Moto X goes on sale, because it uses the same nano SIM card, I think I'm going to pick up and, and swip back, be able to kind of swap back and forth. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or, or find someone that's selling their old device and just use it Wi-Fi only. Because I, I, I'm really impressed with some of the stuff I've seen on the, on the Moto X as well. Yep. It's, it's absolutely fantastic. And the thing is, they just came out, uh, I believe they came out, let me check to see what mine is. Mine's a 32. They just came out with a 64 gig this week. You can try it for a penny. Yeah. Wow. Uh, you give a penny deposit, they'll send it to you, um, and don't be afraid to ship it back, they said. Wow. Fuzzwad Frank Chinoweth at Fuzzwad on the Twitters. He likes cars. He likes Android. He does fun things with Androids and cars. And he yeah, likes cigars. Yes. Yeah. Also, right, you got an article up at insertcointobegin.com. I got two of them up right now. Oh, I got geez. a third one coming tomorrow. Nice. Hitting that E3. Also, uh, heading things up over there. Chachi, 
fuck your real name. Chachi says on the Twitter, insertcoinabegin.com. He's on Boss Battle every week on this network at sorgatronmedia.com. And general right. wittiness, day to day. Yes. Um, my Twitter account's hilarious. If you're not following what is wrong with you. You're doing Twitter wrong if you aren't. Yeah, um, mm-hmm. but uh, I, I, I wanted to push uh, something really quick. Um, I didn't put it in the document. I forgot. Um, Toonzium has a art and 8-bit exhibit open now. Oh, yes. We didn't get down to that. Ooh, um, I down there at lunch. Uh, Frank and I are going to – Fuzzy and I are going to go down tomorrow. Um, if you want autographs, $100 a piece from each of us. Yeah, um, and uh, there will be a write-up on it on uh, insertcointobegin.com. But uh, it's open. The, the actual opening of the exhibit is Thursday from 7 to 9 p.m. with the artist there. Okay. Um, and uh, it's, it's a free event. Nice. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's, it runs through July, I believe. Um, I, I, I could be wrong on that. Uh, but it's uh, exactly as it sounds. It's all uh, different things in 8-bit. Um, so uh, you'll get a full review of it tomorrow awesome. and that's uh the tunesium downtown over there in uh the 800 block i believe of uh west liberty avenue uh yeah it's uh org. great crew i know i know joe was excited about uh th- that that coming up when we were down there for chachi plays uh yeah so, it, i i just remembered about it awesome so we'll go check i was kind of tired <laughs> <laughs> i might have to go down there thursday and check that out so awesome so uh go check that out insert coin to begin.com and of course we're over at awesome cast dot com uh live that's sorgatronmedia.com you can join us in the chat room uh every uh, th- tuesday night at 6 30 p.m eastern time um and uh we're on twitter at awesome cast uh facebook google plus as well hit us up at awesome cast at sorgatronmedia.com see us on video and audio subscribe to us oh no <laughs> uh, it turned out itunes on. youtube spreaker stitcher as well. And everyone went mute. And everyone went mute. <laughs> Thanks again, Michael Allen at Mike Allen PR on Twitter, uh, helping us with notes and tweets all night long. I see him uh, putting a couple things in there for. Actually, maybe that's that's Chilla. I don't know. I can't. What color is that? The who's pink? Um, Turn found town for E3. I like that title. Thank you to our awesome chat room that, that's been rolling all night, uh, including. Uh, uh, well, it all went away. That's interesting. I think my chat room just aired. Uh, thank you to our awesome chat room. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. Awesome.